Hello and welcome to At Brookings. I'm Gigi Hinton. This week, the people of Afghanistan headed to their polling places to vote for just the second time since the Taliban fell in 2001. Our expert tells us what this all means for them and our security as well. Then, U.S. government officials say we should brace ourselves for another wave of the H1N1 flu virus. We have an expert that says interesting things could lie before us. And could the economy get any worse? Well, we'll have thoughts about that from the man on the street. We'll have all that next at Brookings. This is At Brookings, a review of news and events for the week of August 17, 2009. Afghanistan held elections this week despite a number of violent attempts to keep voters away from the polls. These are the first such elections in eight years, and the Afghanis want their voices heard, says fellow Vanda Felbuck Brown. Perception that the election is genuinely Afghan. There is no imposition of uh, the winner from abroad. And that's clearly the position of the U.S. That's what the international community has emphasized. However, many Afghans still don't believe that. They very much believe that the decision will be made in Washington. And so persuading them that however it comes out, the international community had nothing to do with that it was the will of the people will be critical. The medical community and government officials are preparing for another bout of H1N1 or swine flu. Senior fellow Joshua Epstein says computer modeling can help predict certain factors about the virus. We expect something like a 30 percent attack rate, which is a high level of disease. We are talking about tens of millions of cases worldwide. But again, the main issue is whether it will mutate into a form more severe Uh, than we've seen, and whether we can develop a well-matched vaccine to that disease, whether people will adhere to distancing measures to stay home from school, stay home from work, uh, and so forth. So we can, that number, 30% attack rate, assumes business as usual, no interventions, no social distancing, no travel restrictions, none of the things that we would impose. So we hope to do way better than that. But it needs to be understood that if we don't do those things, it could be very severe. Do I think the economic downturn is over? I think it has hit the bottom. I think we're going to be down towards the bottom for a while. Considering the numbers, the fact that peop- a lot of people are still looking for jobs, obviously there's been some good news coming out of you know Germany and Japan, um, but I think it's probably a little too early to say it's completely over for everyone. I don't think it'll get worse. And that's what I think. At Brookings is produced by the Brookings Institution. To learn more about the issues discussed on At Brookings, visit our website at brookings.edu.